from WFRV TV, Local 5, serving Northeast Wisconsin, including Green Bay, Fox Cities, and the Lakeshore. This is Newsmaker Sunday. Good morning. Welcome to Newsmaker Sunday. I'm Tom Zalaski. Well, November is National Adoption Month, and we here with Local 5 are highlighting a group that is helping couples to build up their families, so to speak. This morning, we are joined by two adoption managers from Catholic Charities. We have Chelsea Balkum young and Mackenzie Van Lannan to my far right. Uh, ladies, good morning. Good Thanks. to see you. Thanks Thank for joining you. us Thank today. You. Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Green Bay, around for more than 100 years. Um, you you are an organization that serves nearly 10,000 people a year. Fill me in some of the uh, activities, some of the services that you provide to people. Yeah, so like you said, Catholic Charities has been around for over 100 years mm -hmm. serving families of Northeast Wisconsin. We have mental health counseling, we have financial health counseling, immigration legal services, refugee resettlement, and then of course our adoption and pregnancy support services. And, and you mentioned adoption, which is the main reason yeah. that all brings us here today. Um, adoption services, uh, getting a child into a loving adoptive home. For all the services you provide, that's got to be the highlight when you make that thing happen, is it? It is. I mean, yes. I think we both would agree it's such a rewarding like part of our job. Yes. I want to get into detail about your adoptions. Let me first get a little bit more detail on some of the programs you provide. Financial health. What are you doing for people? Yeah, so um, we have some financial health counselors and they're yeah. helping people just work through their finances and help um, with um, buying a house, preventing um, foreclosures, bankruptcy, um, budgeting. Okay, uh, another topic, one that I'm sure is gonna play largely in the next few years, immigration legal services. Yeah. What do you do there? Yeah, so we help um, people um, gain legal status um, and provide those services. Mental health counseling. Yeah, so as we know, so important in this area. So we have um, therapists um, here in Green Bay and in Menasha and in Marinette um, to serve people, um, whether it's through individual or family counseling. Kids that are adopted, how many are you placing in homes each year? I would say it varies um, because yeah. we do all types of different adoptions too. So okay. we do step parent adoption, relative, international, domestic. So I would say on average, 30-ish yeah. mm -hmm. adoptions yeah. a year. And, and is there a waiting list of children and is there a waiting list of people who want to adopt? There's always more adoptive, when we're talking about our domestic infant program, which is what people typically think of with adoption, there's always gonna be more adoptive parents than there are children. So when you're thinking of adoption through foster care, it's a little bit different. There are many children who are waiting to find their forever yeah. families, but through private adoption, it is a little bit different than what people typically think. Um, typically, there are more adoptive parents than there are babies to be adopted. What was your road, each of you, to getting here? Chelsea, how did you get to where you are now? Yeah, I mean, I think um, growing up, both my parents were in the helping field, and so I just kind of saw that modeled throughout my life. In college, I volunteered at a maternity home, so that was kind of like my first experience of seeing women who were faced with an unplanned pregnancy mm -hmm. and how like critical it was that they needed support. So that was kind of like my first experience, and I knew I wanted to work with kids and families and just kept going in my education and ended up here, and it's been a great fit. Yeah. Mackenzie, how'd you get here? Yeah, for me, actually, similar as far as a start, my mom is a social worker, so that kind of, um, and many of our family friends are, so that kind of started it for me too, and then I worked in child protection, foster care, treatment foster care for a number of years, and have just always loved working with children and families, and through this job, it's a great fit for me as well, and it's a more positive, supportive role, which yeah. I really enjoyed. We have much more to come on adoption and the process, so please stay right there. We are back now with Chelsea and Mackenzie from Catholic Charities, the adoption services, the adoption process. How has it changed over the years? Has it? Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. It has. It has changed so much. Yeah, I think, you know, it, of some time ago, like when we're looking at 50 years back or, you know, even farther than that, adoptions were very 
um, closed, secretive, not yeah, really hush, talked hush. about. It, it was hush hush. It was very taboo, um, especially for expectant moms to talk about their decision to place. Um, it was like you just you give birth, you forget about it, you move on, which we know is not healthy. It's not the. It was not handled well mm -hmm. um, back in the day, and so over time, it's really grown, and we now know that openness is really beneficial for. Um, everybody involved in the adoption triad, which is the adoptive parents, the child who's adopted, and then birth parents. Um, it provides updates for birth parents so they know how their child's doing, and for the adoptive parents can answer some questions and put pieces together for them, and then for the child, it helps them form their identity, know where they came from, mm -hmm. and you know maybe even understanding their biological parents' decision to place them. Yeah, uh, what's the criteria? I want to adopt. Mm -hmm. What's what, what's the criteria? What minimums do I have to meet? Yeah, I mean, so the state of Wisconsin has kind of set a lot of the criteria. So um, you have to be healthy enough to probably live until that child is reaches age 18. Which is something nobody really thinks about. I know, mm -hmm. you have to have mm -hmm. a doctor sign off on a form saying that you're healthy enough. You have to be able to be financially stable enough mm -hmm. um, to raise a child. We require references and background checks since the age of 18. And of course, we're looking for a safe, stable, loving homes. Um, and then every family um, completes 30 plus hours of adoption education as part of the process. Okay, yeah, because they don't want you to be 60 or 65 years old and uh, adopting an infant. That's yeah. just not gonna work. Yeah. So So I would say that yeah. most, most of the families that we work with are in their mid 20s to late 40s. Yeah. How does a couple go about adopting? Yeah. Do they pick up the phone and call you and say, I want to adopt a child. How does it start? How does it work? What's the process? Yeah, typically they're reaching out to us and then depending on the kind of adoption, um, we have like for our domestic infant program, we have an informational session that every couple has to attend together to get more information on the program. We do talk about our values like openness and um, things that we feel are important for the child, for the expectant parent, and they need to be open to that. Um, so we talk about that to make sure it's the right fit for them. And then if they feel that it is, they either would apply or we would um, put them on a wait list and then contact them when there's an opening to apply to the program. For other types of adoption, they would reach out, we provide information and then send them an application to complete the process. Upon first or second contact with these people, do you know right away either this is gonna work or this is not gonna work with this particular couple? I think like what we find is that most people who are coming to adoption have actually spent a lot of time thinking about it and have done a lot of research. So I think by the time they attend an informational session, they start the home study process, I think they have a better understanding. So I think, and I think like, like everything, there's a learning opportunity to become more aware of everything that goes into adoption. So those who apply, they know they've got a pretty good shot at getting accepted. I think that most, what we're looking for, again, is kind of like safe, stable, loving homes, and I think most people can provide that. Yeah. Your, uh, your social workers, I take it that they work with the family during the adoption process, but what about when the adoption has been completed? Yeah. Do they still stay with that family for a certain duration? Yeah, so in the state of Wisconsin, we follow families for a minimum of six months before the adoption is finalized. So the infant is placed in the home and then we conduct monthly or more often home visits. Mm -hmm. um, and then after the adoption is finalized, we can kind of end working with a family, but we sometimes never do. I mean, we want families to be able to reach out to us um, whenever they have something that's going on. We have some great resources um, across the state of Wisconsin. We have therapists that are specialize in adoption. Um, for our birth parents, we offer lifetime support to them. So we want mm -hmm. people to know that like, we understand adoption's not just like a one-time, one event thing. It's really something over the lifetime. Yeah, can people rely on you if they adopt and four, five, six months later they go, hey, I didn't know about this part of it. Well, we I need some help. Yes, and we hope that through all of the education and time we've spent with them, because it's intensive. I mean, it's a really intensive process to adopt yeah. um, through the home study. The, uh, the kids who are in need of adoption, and I don't mean the infants, mm -hmm. I mean the, the, the younger kids, where are they right now? Mm -hmm. Where are some of those kids who are in need of adoption? Where physically are they today? 
I would say, aside from infant adoption, really the the larger need would be like adoption through foster care. Um, those kids who are waiting for, for for forever families. Okay, so they're mainly in foster care. They are, yes. Mm -hmm. um, do those kids who are in foster care, uh, number one, do they want to be adopted? I would say that would say in yeah. our yes. experience, yes, most yeah. kiddos want to okay. be adopted. Do yeah. they know that somebody is trying to adopt them? Yes, typically they do, yep. yeah. Usually and they would be in a foster home for a number, probably a number of years before they're being adopted by their foster families. So they'd have a pretty good relationship with them. And are they ever told ahead of time that you know somebody's trying to adopt you and then God forbid it doesn't go through and you've got to break the news to the poor child, it didn't work. Yeah. It's not gonna happen. It I think happens. It happens and I think it's something really? that every social worker, every agency really tries to avoid happening. Yeah. That's got to be the most disappointing, not only for the child, but yeah. also for you folks. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. We have much more to come on adoption, so please stay with us. And welcome back to Newsmaker Sunday. Topic this morning, adoption services through Catholic Charities. You mentioned the different kinds of adoptions that you do. Um, I want to get into some of those because not a whole lot of people uh, may understand you know, adoption is not just one thing. You do so many things. First of all, uh, tell us about your infant adoption program. How does that work? Yeah, so infant adoption is what people typically think of, I think, when they think of adoption. Um, so that would be a situation where we have a approved, licensed couple waiting to adopt, and then we as a program are matching them with an expectant parent who contacts our agency and is wanting to create an adoption plan for their child. Why are parents or a parent giving up an infant? Yeah. I think expectant parents come to us for a whole, I mean, there's no one typical expectant mm -hmm. parent. Um, I think they're at a point in their life at that point that they decide they just aren't able to parent in a way that they want to. They deeply, deeply love their child, mm -hmm. um, but they know at this moment they can't provide for them, and so they want to create an adoption plan so they can um, have that child grow up in a stable, loving home. So are they coming to you during pregnancy or after the birth? Usually mm -hmm. during pregnancy. Most of the time, occasionally after they delivered. Really? Um, yep, and so, which is fine. We kind of say it's not too late. Give us mm -hmm. a call and we'll meet um, men and women at the hospital and talk about what adoption would look like. All right, independent adoptions. What's that? Independent is like a couple of different things, but one is when people meet on their own. So a, a couple is looking to adopt and they connect with a family friend, a, like a, someone at church. Someone at church. Yeah. I mean, these connections happen all of the time. So they independently meet and then they come to our agency to receive services. And that happens? It happens it a does. lot. You get two adults here, two adults here meeting at church and one adult group says, I don't want our kid. You can have them. And well, they say I'm not in a place where I can parent. Wow. Yes, and so and then usually I would say the connection might happen with someone in between. Like right. I know my niece is um, she's unexpectedly pregnant. Um, she's hoping to create an adoption plan. I know this great family member. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Out of state adoptions. Yep. That would be when a family is using our services for home study services, and they use an agency um, outside of the state of Wisconsin. Um, here's another interesting one. Tell us about relative and step adoptions. Yeah, so relative adoption would be um, similar to a situation like let's say a child was placed in foster care with a relative or ultimately ended up with a relative yeah. and maybe they have guardianship of that child or long-term placement and then usually the child has been with them for some amount of time and then they want to um, adopt to make it legal and permanent. Um, so they already have that established relationship with the relative. And then for step parents, it would be um, a biological parent in the home, they've been remarried, and that step parent has taken assumed a parental role. And again, they're making it legal and officializing their relationship through adoption. And finally, um Open adoption, never heard of that term before. What is that? Yeah, I mean, open adoption is kind of like a huge continuum, but really open adoption allows 
a birth parent to kind of have a window into their child's life. They're able to get updates, they understand how their child's doing. Um, so not like how we did it, kind of the secrecy from years past. Um, there's open communication, there's often a relationship between the adoptive parents and the birth parents. Um, and it's something that really a lot of families have come to embrace. Yeah, you talked about that in the first segment of the yeah. show, that uh, there seems to be more openness. You had mentioned, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Mackenzie, that years ago, 50 years ago, taboo, hush, hush, nobody said anything about it. Yeah. Exactly. And now, I guess people don't have a problem with knowing, knowing I'm adopted, knowing those are my birth parents, and the birth parents and the adoptive parents yeah, knowing I, each other. I think they're all coming together because they love that child. And so right. they kind of, we all kind of look at it as there's more people to love that child. I think that sometimes people think, is it confusing? Nope, it's not. Kids can figure out all of those things. And so um, I think really research has found open adoption can be really beneficial. Yeah, and, yeah. and have you found that the kids are okay with that? I mean, the kid understands, yeah, yeah. you know, you're my birth mother and, and yeah. you're my adoptive mother. And, and there's no friction. There really isn't because what we kind of encourage people to do through education is to have those conversations from when the child is super little. So it's never like they're in sixth grade and you're sitting down at the kitchen table telling them for the first time that they're adopted. Mm -hmm. You're having those conversations frequently, regularly, so everyone kind of understands. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Wow. We are going to wrap up right after this, so please stay right there. Back now with Chelsea Bauckham Young and Mackenzie Van Lannen from Catholic Charities Adoption Services. Uh, Catholic Charities has been uh, doing this for uh, a whole number of years, as we mentioned. You provided us with some photos and, uh, and, and some videos. We're going to talk about a couple of families here uh, in their journey. Let's start with the Brault family. Now, I know nothing about this uh, ahead of time. The Brault family and Little Kinsley. Yeah. What's that story? Yeah, so they actually have a pretty amazing story, which we don't have time to get into all of the details, <laughs> yeah. although I wish we could. Um, but really with them, they um, it was about a year ago when they took placement of Kinsley, and they took a leap of faith because she was born with um, a grade 3 brain bleed and had some pretty significant medical issues. She was born about eight weeks early. Um, and so her future was very uncertain, I would say, when she mm. was born, and they talked about it, they talked with family, and they're like, we're gonna move forward. We feel that this is the right decision for us. And so um, their family was created. Kinsley's now thriving. She's doing amazing. She's making milestones all the time, exceeding doctor's expectations. And the Brults are a huge part of that. They've been so supportive. They've been by her side every day since she was born um, and just spending that time bonding and attaching to her. And she's doing great. Looks like she's doing yeah. great. Well, yes, happy, she's happy amazing. Kid right there. All right, uh, the next family, uh, the Nitka family. Nitka family and Jackson. What's their yeah. story? Yeah. yeah, so they also have, you know, that leap of faith story where they had just gotten licensed, and this was last year as well. And about, I mean, the week that they were approved, this <laughs> referral came through for little Jackson. And again, they were like, we're saying yes, we're ready. This is what we want to do. And it ended up being amazing. Um, we've got to see him grow over the past year and they'll check in with little updates on him and they're all doing wonderful. That first picture, it, I, it, it, he had a look on his face like, I got it made. I, yeah, look no, at that. and he sure does. I, know. I hit the lottery. And we're so lucky that our families continue to update us and send, these, yeah, send us these great. gorgeous pics. That's yeah. great. How can uh, people find out more about adoptions yeah. through Catholic Charities? Yeah, probably the best thing is to go to our website okay. um, it, or give us a call. I mean, mm -hmm. really, and we offer informational sessions every other month in person so people can find out more about adoption. And so they just look online or give us a call and they can sign up for that. Yeah, what goes on at these information sessions? Yeah, we just go through start to finish what it might look like to adopt and we answer questions that people have. They're about an hour and a half in length. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we encourage people to go to informational sessions to contact us and so people can really go into the process with eyes wide open. And is this always in person or is there a virtual option? Uh, we, we do both. 
This next year, we're hoping to do most things in person. We I find imagine that, you'd rather have yeah, it in I mean, person. It is, yeah. We find it better, and we think people seem more comfortable to ask questions. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And, and what about volunteer opportunities? Do you need volunteers? Yeah, we have a volunteer department mm -hmm. um, at Catholic Charities as well. So if people are interested in volunteering, they just give us a call. And, and so if I wanted to be a volunteer, what sorts of things would I do? Because I don't imagine a volunteer has any background or education in, in the intricacies of all of this. What do your volunteers do? Yeah. And so like volunteers can be with any department within Catholic Charity, so not just with our department. So I think um, they're helping with um, moving people into stable housing, they're helping with driving, they're helping be a support person. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that people can help. Hmm. Yeah. Ever get uh, a kid coming back and going, remember me? Um, well, we, I think like, <laughs> we're getting there. Yeah. We're getting there, I yeah. mean, after this many years in the field, so yes. yeah, yeah. Best part about your jobs? It's, it's great. It's honestly, it's a great honor and privilege to work with people through this journey. So can't ask for anything more. And when the actual adoption happens, are, are you there? Yeah, when the so-called exchange yeah. takes place. Yes, yes, we are. Yeah. So yeah. we're there both at the time of placement um, and then we're there at the time that the adoption's finalized and that happens in the courthouse with a judge yeah. and yeah. is very official with the hammer and or the gavel, not yeah. the hammer. Right. And <laughs> um, yeah, it's very, very exciting. And that's like one of the best parts of our job because we're like, we've been able to work with this family from when they started to all the way to through, adoption. Through all the way yeah. through. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Chelsea McKenzie, thank you so very much. Yeah, uplifting, you. uplifting show this morning. Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you so you. much. And if you have a newsmaker in your town who you think we should have on this program, let us know about it. Send us an email to tips at wearegreenbay.com or you can message us on Facebook and be sure to join us once again Sunday morning. Until then, have a great day.